Hi, I'm Rocco Steno and welcome to Storymakers. Today I have the creators of Three Hens, a Peacock, and the Enormous Egg, Lester Lamanek and Henry Cole. Welcome, gentlemen. Hi, Rocco. It's so good to be here. Well, this book is a sequel to Three Hens and a Peacock, where the hens and the peacock switch jobs. Tell us what happens in Three Hens, a Peacock, and the Enormous Egg. In this book, the three hens, the peacock, and the old hound have to work together to figure out what to do with that enormous egg. And they discover that working together is always better. This story obviously takes place on a farm. Did you grow up on a farm? When I was growing up, we would go out to my grandparents' farm about every other weekend or so, and that was always fun. And now, where I live is part of an old farm. So you could say that I live on a farm too. What's your favorite memory about visiting the farm? Granny would go down to the pasture fence where she kept a little stool by the hen house. And she would call out to the cow, Bessie, Bessie. And that old cow would come lumbering up through the pasture and stand right there by the fence. And Granny would sit on that little three-legged stool and put a bucket underneath uh, Bessie. And then she would milk the cow until the bucket was full. And that was their milk for the day. She used it for them to drink and to cook with. And if she needed butter, she skimmed off the cream on the top and churned it and made her own butter. And for eggs, every morning she went down to the hen house with a basket, reached right under the hens and pulled out the eggs. Wow. With five boys, her husband and herself, it took a lot of eggs and milk to keep everybody fed. Henry, we love your drawings of all the various animals. Did you grow up on a farm? I did grow up on a farm. I grew up on a dairy farm. We raised Holsteins. Those are the big black and white cows that you see dotted around on fields every now and then. And actually the cows in the story are black and white Holsteins. And we also had some chickens on the farm. One Christmas, I got a small telescope for Christmas. It was like this really great present. And I remember taking the telescope out outside that Christmas day. And I was looking through the telescope and what do you know, the first thing I saw was this little group of chickens. And they were so far away, but the telescope made them really close. So I was super excited to see the expressions on the faces of these chickens. I then got this pad and pen for Christmas. It was a great Christmas, I gotta tell you. I got this pad and pen, and I went out and sketched those, kid, those chickens. I would follow them around. They were, uh, they were game chickens, so they weren't in a hen house. They were sort of loose and they could just wander around the farm as they wanted. But I followed those chickens around and I sketched those chickens. And I think they were probably thinking, who's the crazy guy following around sketching us? But I, I made these little detailed pen drawings of chickens. And I think that's when I first decided that drawing was great, chickens were great. And you might notice that a lot of my books, chickens figure prominently because I am, I'm a big fan of chickens. I noticed the hens, their names all start with a letter M. Was there a reason for that? That's just because I like alliteration. Alliteration, what does that mean? Oh, well that's when three or four words come together in a sentence, close together, that all began with the same letter or sound. Like this. The big bear banged on the door. So you've got big, bear, banged, all beginning with a B. So you hear that sound right in a row. Big, bear, banged. So with the hens, it's Mildred, Martha, Mabel, and you might have noticed my name, Lester Lee Laminac, begins with L's. No wonder you like alliteration. So the three hens didn't have names in the first book, and now they do. So if there's another book, will the dog and the peacock have a name? That is a great suggestion, Rocco. I can always use ideas from readers. Maybe your viewers could help us. Why don't our viewers suggest possible names for the dog and the peacock? 
And remember, Lester likes alliteration. So share your suggestions in the comments section below. You know the characters in the book, the hens, the peacock, the dog, you know, sometimes they're happy, they're sad, they're worried, and you're able to show that in your illustrations. Can you show us how you did that? I'd be happy to. You know, that's part of my job, is to show in the face of a character what they're feeling on the inside, whether they're happy or worried or sad. And some characters are easier than others. Birds, like chickens, can be kind of tough. I don't know if you've ever noticed this or not, but... A bird, let's say a chicken, always has the same expression. I mean, if you if you see a, a if you see a blue jay on your bird feeder, here's the face of a happy blue jay. Here's the face of a sad blue jay, angry blue jay, confused blue jay. They always look the same. So my job is to try to show in their face ways to make them express how they're feeling on the inside. And I'll tell you a little secret. I'm not sure everybody knows this, but there are, I think there are four places on a face of a person or of an animal where you can manipulate and, and change little parts to make the expression change too. Let me show you what I mean. Those four places are here, 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 and here. The eyebrows and the corners of the mouth. Here's a chicken. I'm going to start with something easy like a chicken. And I'm going to do a chicken with its feathers on. Not a chicken that you'd get out of the out of the meat department at the store, but a chicken like this. Okay, I'm going to start with the beak. And there's his feathers and his, and his neck. I like big eyes because eyes can be very expressive. And I'll put a little chickeny thing on top there. Now here comes the important part. Remember I said corners of the mouth and eyebrows? Watch how I change the expression by turning down the corner of the mouth. And then, watch the eyebrows. I've changed the expression entirely. Watch this. I'm going to play the chicken. This time the mouth goes out. And look at the eyebrows. He's turned into a very friendly, a very friendly chicken. You can do it just by changing the eyebrows and the corner of the mouth. You can make a chicken's expression do all kinds of things. And one other thing I love to do for birds, I know they don't have teeth. Birds don't have teeth. Birds have a special organ down about here that has little bits of grit and sand and sometimes stones. When they swallow food, the food goes into that organ and it's ground up by this, like a little grinding machine. So they don't need teeth. They just have that organ. But sometimes I like to juice things up a little, a little bit. And I'll put teeth in because I think teeth can be kind of fun. Even on a bird. Let's see, what should I make this one? I'm going to make this one terrified. Teeth. Eyebrows up. And yet this one's even sweating a little bit. So you can see how can, just by using corners of the mouth and eyebrows, just keep those in mind and you can change an expression just like that. I think I'm gonna go home and practice that. Thank you, gentlemen, for being our guest here today. Rocco, this has been great. It's been wonderful to be with you and with your viewers. It was such fun to be here. Thanks, Rocco. Remember, until next time, read a book in any format.